<laughs> hey, Woodies. Wood Pops here. In today's episode of Expression in Wood, I'm going to be wood turning a three sided bowl. Yep, you heard me. I'm going to be wood turning a three sided bowl, just like this one, a little bigger. I've made lots of three sided bowls in the past. Here's one I'm working on right now, which is going to be a three sided box. So you can see the basic design is the same. The only difference is one's a bowl and one's going to be a box. So today we're just going to be wood turning a three sided bowl. Okay? So stick around. Make sure you watch the whole video to the end. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do so now and click the little bell so you'll be notified. And let's just jump right in here to wood turning a three-sided bowl. All right, all right, all right, let's go. Okay, we got our <clears throat> oak cube here, and what we're going to do is we're going to put it right here between the headstock and the tailstock, and we're going from point to point. Okay, I don't have any kind of devices in the headstock, I'm going right straight in to the headstock here. Back here, I'm going right into the live center, corner to corner, okay? And I don't have a tight fit yet. It's a loose fit. <clears throat> I have to adjust it. Here's how we're going to adjust it. See these marks here? And then I want to rotate my cube. And I want to make sure that my second point is lined up right there with that line. Rotate it again. And the third one. So I've got that pretty close to dead on. So now I'm going to tighten up my tailstock nice and tight so that I'm turning, <clears throat> I've got my cube jammed straight in to the headstock and into the live center of the tailstock. You can see that right there and right there, okay? And that's what we want. I'm going to make sure everything is nice and tight. And I'm going to rotate this, and you can see my points on my cube are lined up perfect. So this, this cube is right dead center in my headstock and tailstock, and that's what you want, okay? That's what we're gonna do. That's how you wanna set up your piece. It won't come out of there, so don't, don't worry about that. Just be careful, you know, this is light touches. I'm very experienced with a bowl gouge, which is what I'll be using. And I'm just going to take light cuts. I'm going to have my safety glasses on. And I'm going to have uh, my full face shield on. And also, I'm going to be standing over here to the side, like this, over here, so that I'm really not in, my, my head is not in the line of fire in case something were to happen. Okay? I'm going to be turning just like this. So. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to crank the speed all the way down and just get a look at this, okay? And that's what it looks like when you're turning, okay?
Now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to carve this part out right here and we're going to this which is going to be the bottom this is going to be the bottom of our piece and we're going to put a spigot down here so that we can hold it in a four jaw chuck and hollow out the inside. Okay that's nice and smooth that's a thousand RPMs that's where I'm going to start. I'm using a really sharp Thompson bowl gouge. Riding the bevel right here. This right here is the point of my bowl, okay? This is my bowl right here. Down this way is the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a mark right here so that, that as that black goes around, I'll know that these are my points that I don't want to mess with, okay? This is how I keep my reference. Everything else is going to get cut off. Okay, I want to go back here <clears throat> to my points that I marked before. This first line is the tip of the bowl and this second line is going to be how thick that I make the walls of the bowl. Okay, do you see that? Those are, that's my tips. This is how I keep track. 
right there. I'm going to take a little. I'm going to take a little bit of this way, and then I'm going to do the bottom.
at this point right here, I've stopped because I want to mark or remark and double check my positioning. Because as you can see here, the outside edge of the bowl is where I'm making this line here on my tool rest. That's to remind me where that edge is because when that thing is turning, you can't see the edge. All you see is the shadows. Back here on the other side, I'm going to make another line, and that's going to be how thick I want my bowl. I can't see that edge there because it's turning, and there's not wood there 100% of the time, so it's mostly just a shadow going around. So I use the marks on my tool rest as references to where to start cutting. Okay, so you might want to practice shadow turning if you don't know what that is. You know, shadow turning is turning something that you're, you have wood and air. So you're turning wood and air, turning wood and air, wood and air, wood and air. I call it shadow turning. Now at this point, I'm just hogging out the material. You just want to get it out just the best way you can. I just happen to like using a bowl gouge, so I'm just going to use a bowl gouge for now. So basically this next few minutes of turning is just hogging this out and getting that spigot off of there so we can start the hollowing process. So we're just going to buzz right on through that. When you get down to this point, you just want to be careful to stay away from those two marks on your tool rest because we don't want to start uh, moving the walls of our bowl down in yet. We want to get this material away. We want to be able to get our tool rest right in the hollowing position so that we can line up those two marks with the outside edge of our bowl and that way we're ready to start hollowing so we can be really careful when we start to thin our wall down. So you can see at this point, I've jumped ahead a little bit in my filming, and I've got a uh, mortise there that I cut, and um, makes it a little bit easier for me to start hollowing. And I did that with a, started it with a Forstner bit, and then widened it out. And you'll see in this sequence how I'm how I'm widening this out and starting my my uh, hollowing.
Well, we've pretty much finished hollowing this thing out. The only thing left to do is the sanding part and then the finishing part. And sanding is sanding, and I'm sure you don't want to see that. The finishing, um, on this particular piece, I first did a coats of shellac. I'm going to let that dry. And the next thing I'm going to do with this piece is I'm going to put copper leaf on it and do a gilding video on how I do gilding with chemical patina. So that'll be a different video using this piece so you'll want to look for it. The pieces that you're seeing now are just pieces that I've done at different times that are three-sided bowls. Uh, some of them are three-sided boxes. One of them is a three-sided vase that I pierced. One of them is a three-sided bowl that I did use gold leaf on with a chemical patina. You can see which ones are which. In any case, I appreciate you watching the video. Thanks for staying till the end. And if you haven't subscribed, I hope you'll click on my picture there and subscribe. And there's a couple of videos I've posted up there that you might want to watch. Click them if you want. And again, this is Wood Pops. Thanks for watching.